In Avengers Endgame, our favorite heroes pulled out all the stops and gave it their all to bring down the Mad Titan. Well, except for Tony Stark. Yes, he did make the ultimate sacrifice to save the day, but it's possible that that wouldn't have been necessary if he didn't squirrel away a fantastical piece of tech instead of using it in this battle of royale. We saw many heroes re-emerge after being dusted, but where was perhaps the mightiest Avenger of them all? Edith. We were first introduced to Edith in the movie Spider-Man Far From Home, which was our first look at the MCU post-Avengers Endgame. It was a weird world without the beloved hero Tony Stark, but Iron Man did leave behind a legacy in the form of Peter Parker and a spiffy pair of sunglasses. Hello, Peter. I am Edith, Tony Stark's augmented reality oh. security and defense system. You know, somebody, I can't remember who it exactly was, once said, Remember, with great power, comes great responsibility. Clearly, Peter Parker needs to work on being more responsible because almost as soon as he got those glasses on, he nearly annihilated an entire bus full of his classmates. Yeesh. Edith is, well, I'll let her introduce herself. Even dead, I'm the hero. Tony loved his acronyms. She is an augmented reality and defense system designed by Tony Stark that can access the Stark Industries global satellite network. Basically, she's a super handy AI that can order a massive amount of drones to descend at any time, which would be handy as long as nobody willingly hands them over to a villain. But who would do something as silly as that? While Peter definitely experienced a bit of a learning curve with Edith, its creator Tony Stark would have been able to wield the glasses a lot more effectively. So the question now is, why didn't he? It seems safe to assume that Tony created Edith at some point during Avengers Endgame, likely during the five-year time jump. He seemed pretty busy with figuring out time travel once he reunited with the Avengers, and we know he was inventing during his downtime, since he made a suit for Pepper Potts. So if he had Edith before the final showdown with Thanos, why didn't the glasses ever come into play? This was THE big battle, and Tony clearly knew that going into it, since he already prepared a hologram to be played of himself in case he didn't make it. Man, that guy loves having the last word. One obvious answer to why didn't Tony use Edith during Endgame is because they wanted to use it as a plot device in Far From Home instead. But instead of getting meta about it, let's take a look at some in-universe explanations for why things worked out this way, because they're a lot more convincing than you might think. In Spider-Man Far From Home, Mysterio was able to use Edith to order a massive drone strike which caused a ton of damage and chaos that our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man had to deal with. It wasn't that easy, and taking down the drones one by one wasn't really an option. Peter had to track down the source and get back the glasses in order to put a stop to the chaos, and he didn't escape from his adventure unscathed. Believe me, I'm not saying that Edith isn't powerful by any means, but I am going to say that it probably wouldn't have been the game changer many people think it could have been in Endgame. Even though he's greatly powered down compared to his comic book counterpart, Thanos was still one of the most powerful characters in the entire MCU. We've seen heroes like the Incredible Hulk and Thor go up against him one-on-one -on -one and still fail to bring him down, even when he didn't have all the Infinity Stones at his disposal. When 2014 Thanos showed up during Endgame and the Avengers were forced to stand against him, it wasn't exactly an easy battle, despite the fact that the heroes had strength and numbers on their side. Thanos is just that strong, so much so that bringing the full might of Edith down upon him might not have done that much. After all, Spider-Man was able to defeat Mysterio, who had both Edith and his own illusions on his side, so it doesn't seem crazy to suggest that Thanos could have conquered the drones if they were brought out. Things got a lot more complex in this fight when allies of both Thanos and the Avengers started showing up. It was an all-out brawl, and things got kinda complicated. It was a seemingly endless expanse of warriors fighting for their lives. Our heroes were playing hot potato with the Infinity Gauntlet, and things started looking awfully grim for the good guys. You might be thinking this would have been the perfect time for a massive influx of drones. But there's one big reason I think that would have ended badly, and we already saw it happen in Far From Home. You're in the strike zone. The chance of getting oh, hit is- fire! All the drones! Now! Yeah, friendly fire's a thing, and I don't like the odds of our heroes sustaining serious injuries thanks to an army of drones blasting everything. 
Even if Tony was able to command the drones to only fire on enemies, accidents have been known to happen. And if he has to sit around micromanaging drones, then he can't go all out in his Iron Man suit, and that doesn't seem like a very good trade-off. Even someone as brilliant as Tony Stark has limits to how much they can multitask, and a drone fleet could have distracted him. Oh, and if you want irrefutable proof that Iron Man using Edith wouldn't have helped defeat Thanos, don't worry, I got some. How many did we win? One. This little part from Infinity War, right here. Doctor Strange looked at over 14 million possible futures, and I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess Tony tried to use Edith in at least one of them. And yet, Doctor Strange said, one, and not just one unless you integrate an AI with a pair of cool shades and fly around a bunch of drones. If Tony did use Edith, best case scenario, he could have made the fight a little bit easier on his allies. Worst case scenario, he could have accidentally injured someone on his side, or worse. Now, we know all of this because we're clearly brilliant, but Tony didn't know this going into the final battle, so we still need to think about why Tony didn't try to utilize Edith at any point during Endgame. And I think this could have something to do with the time period in which he created the glasses. As I mentioned earlier, I believe Tony designed these during the time skip in Endgame, which was a point when Tony felt more alone than ever. During Captain America Civil War, the Avengers fractured, and Tony and Steve Rogers didn't exactly part on good terms. And if you thought that was bad, well, things were a little tense at the beginning of Endgame as well. Zero zip nada. No trust. During Age of Ultron, we learned Tony was terrified after the Battle of New York revealed that there were enemies he wasn't strong enough to defeat on his own. Captain America assured him that they could defeat anything together, and then they all worked together to bring down Ultron, which seemingly proved his point. Tony knows the power of having backup, and after living through Civil War and the Decimation, he felt like he didn't have any, which likely led to the creation of Edith, a kind of artificial backup slash teammate. But eventually, the team got back together with a plan to put things right, and Tony and Steve put the past behind them. If Tony created Edith to compensate for missing the other Avengers, then it explains why he didn't need it anymore at this point. However, he did leave them behind for Peter Parker, to be given to him if Tony was no longer around, and it was Peter who needed backup. After all, we all know Tony's always been good at being there for Peter, even if he wasn't actually there. Thank God this place has Wi-Fi or you would be toast right now. Even before Edith, Tony had the power to unleash remote-controlled Iron Man suits whenever he wanted to, and they were incredibly effective. I mean, they couldn't do anything, but they were pretty close. You want to just kiss it on the uh, facial slit. After Iron Man 3, Tony cooled it with his army of super suits, but clearly kept a few around just for checking up on Peter Parker at the very least. So he has had the option to have remote weapons fight for him, but he's chosen not to utilize them in most cases. One reason for this could very well be the fact that he struggles to step away from the suit, and more so than that, the feeling of personal responsibility he has when he sees trouble. Because as we all know, that's what heroes do. Tony's not someone who lets other people fight his fights, even if it means risking his life. And this could have something to do with one of his biggest instances of character development in the MCU. Another factor which may have impacted his decision to leave Edith behind could be traced back to the very first Iron Man movie. I know it seems like just yesterday Tony was putting on a super suit for the very first time. He learned several important lessons during that movie, and one of them was that weapons can hurt people, even if they are also really profitable. Hey, the guy's come a long way since then. His company, Stark Industries, created dangerous technology, which was then sold and used to hurt people, something Tony found a lot harder to justify when he was one of those people. After Yinsen sacrificed himself for Tony in that cave, our hero decided to make some major life changes. Thank you for saving me. Don't waste your life. He shut down the weapons division and started taking justice into his own hands. Sitting back and letting other people or projectiles do all the work isn't Tony's style, and even when he does send up remote-controlled suits, he's the one controlling them. He wouldn't have been able to devote the necessary brain power to commanding the drones and fighting Thanos on his own, and given what we know about his character, there's no doubt in my mind which choice he would make. Captain America once doubted that Tony was the type of person to get his hands dirty, but he's been proven wrong many times over at this point. We can't see the future, but Doctor Strange sure as heck can, and based on what we saw transpire between him and Tony, it seems like the Edith glasses wouldn't have helped defeat Thanos in any kind of meaningful way. 
Either that or Tony really, really misinterpreted Strange's hand signal. And he was just telling him to put his shades on because his future was going to be so darn bright. But somehow, I don't think that's the case. Even though Peter really goofed up his trial run of those glasses, he'll still likely be able to put them to good use at some point in the future, now that he knows how not to sick drones on his classmates. 